So good that you're joining us again on this broadcast tonight. We love so much your participation in prayer and fasting and seeking the Lord. And uh, we just want to encourage you as well, those of you that are partnering with us and and, and, uh, donating and and making contributions towards this ministry. You are such a blessing to us. It's, it's because of you that we can continue to do this this, uh, this every week and multiple platforms across the world. And, and we thank you so much for your contribution. And, but I specifically want to thank you for your prayers, you know, not just your prayers for us, but sending us your prayer requests so that we may partner with you and pray for your breakthrough and trust God for your, uh, your divine uh, moment of what God has planned for your life. Amen. I want to share with you some thoughts today and tonight as I come to you from Hobart, Tasmania. Uh, and I just feel right now that God is, is pressing upon us a few things. And I was wondering, what, what does it look like to come to Jesus? Um, you know, I'm not talking about salvation as much, but I'm talking about what does it look like? What is our posture? What does it look like to come to a place with Jesus? And the reason I ask that is I've been pondering this idea Is it possible that sinners can show us, can teach us, can reveal to us something that we can learn about coming to Jesus? My scripture today and my message title is really called, um, Do We Love Much? Do You Love Much? And and, and there's something in the scripture that I want to touch on. It's an interesting question. Luke 7, verse 36, if you have your Bibles, or otherwise you can just follow with me. Luke 37 Uh, sorry, Luke 7, verse 36 uh, to 50. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. This is Jesus. And he he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman uh, in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his, uh, and, and stood at his f- uh, feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. She kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. When, she, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman uh, this is who is touching him. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And, uh, so he said, teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. And when they had nothing, they both had nothing, uh, which, with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And, and he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman, but he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is a, this is a really, uh, this story must 
must rattle your mind. Here we have a story of a Pharisee by the name of Simon. Simon invites Jesus to come for a meal at his house. Uh, it's the Pharisee's invitation. The Pharisee had an idea of how this, how this event would go. He had a plan on how it would go. He invited Jesus. He, he, had, a, he had in his mind set the whole, the whole banquet in, in how it would go. And then something happens. There's a woman who shows up. There's a woman who comes to, the, to this meal. Who was she? Well, the well, Bible doesn't tell us much, much other than she was a sinful woman. Uh, she was a person of, of low or even no morals. She might have been a prostitute. Uh, she was unworthy, clearly, by the way that Simon spoke. Uh, she was one who did not belong. She did not belong in that place. So she had no status to be there. She was not, a notorious sinner, the Bible tells us. It's clear she was not welcome at the Pharisee's house, but it did not seem to bother her. From the moment she arrives, from the moment she gets there, she fixed her eyes on Jesus, and she refused to be distracted by anything else that was happening. She fixed her eyes on, on her Savior, on Jesus Christ, and she would not allow anything that was going on in the house to get in the way. Something about Jesus unlocked her heart. Something about coming to Him uh, inspired her to be so fixated on His presence. She was making a scene. She was making a mess. <laughs> the Bible says that she was getting very emotional. She was stirred up. Clearly, she was not acting normally. Her tears were real. They were not hidden. The aroma of her worship was such that the fragrance could be smelt right through the house. There was no way that this woman would be ignored. There's no way that this woman's uh, a moment of, of coming to Jesus uh, would go by without being noticed. She wanted to clean his feet. She had no towel. She, she used her own hair, the Bible says. Then she kissed him again and again and again. And she poured perfume on his feet. This was raw. This was unusual. The, the thing that stands out in this story is no way does it say that she was wanting anything from Jesus. She didn't come asking for anything. She didn't come uh, for something she could gain. This was pure worship. She desired to come to Jesus and to worship him, to give him her worship. The thing that really stirred the room, the thing that really upset the host, was that Jesus accepted this extravagant worship coming from this woman. Jesus loved it. Jesus was blessed by it. Jesus enjoyed it. Jesus defended this woman, and he even blessed her for, for, for doing it. It was easy for Jesus to do, but it was not easy for Simon to accept. He judged. He judged this woman, and he judged Jesus. He came and criticized, and he said, this cannot be right. This cannot be. Jesus, you, it would be better for you to preserve your dignity. It would be better for you to hold your status. It, it, it's not good for your appearance, Jesus, to have this kind of thing going on. You've got to keep the place clean. You've got to keep the, 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 uh, the way we do things right. Uh, you can't be undignified in the midst of this place. Uh, Jesus, it would be better for you to know that this woman is a sinful woman and push her away. And that, my friends, is, is a big part of my message today. Day. In the world uh, out there, there are many broken people like this woman. There are many people who, who are desperately in need of Jesus Christ. But, but we, we see every time the gospel is preached, every time people get to this raw place of preaching the gospel, that there is an uproar of dignified people saying, we don't do that kind of thing around here. We see the same thing in worship, in churches all over the world, and in homes all over the world, in parks and places where people come to worship God with all of their heart, and they pour themselves out to Jesus, that some would come and say, that's undignified, you shouldn't worship that way, that is not how we do these things. Ultimately, Jesus was despised, and he was rejected. And he was even killed on a cross for preaching the gospel to this kind of sinner. 
Hear me, my friends, today. Jesus was not ashamed of this woman. In fact, he saw something powerful in her. He saw something beautiful in her. He saw her faith. He saw her love. But most of all, I believe, he saw her as a child of God. He saw her inner beauty. He saw the potential that was within her. He saw how much God loves her and wants to see her be restored and put back to life. No one respected this woman. In fact, they wanted to treat her like garbage. But Jesus chose to honor her and lift her up in that place. I love also the fact that Jesus is so, so, so powerful and wonderful in how he preaches the gospel. In this moment, instead of rebuking Simon in the way that he's cast out and, and that he's made uh, worth nothing, Jesus comes to help Simon and he comes to lift up this woman and he, and he, says, he tells this story and the story is a simple one. Jesus says there was, there was a money lender and there were two debtors, two people who owed money. Both of them owed money that they did not have. One owed 5,000, oh sorry, one owed 500 denarii, and that's about, worth about $50,000. Another owed 50 denarii, and that's worth about $5,000. The problem was the amount was irrelevant because neither of them, the Bible says, was able to repay. Neither of them had capacity to repay. Neither of them had a reserve to go and draw from to repay. So whether they owed 500 or 50, they were unable to repay their debts. But the money lender shows great compassion. He shows great love. And he forgives both of these men their debts. Both of them were set free from the burden of that debt. Then he asks the question, who do you think loves me more? In our kind of thinking, we think like Simon. Simon says, oh, obviously the guy who, who owed 500 denarii, he would be far more loving to the money lender. And in a sense, Jesus says to him, you've judged correctly. But then Jesus comes, and he's so good in the, my friend Shane always says, he comes with a kung fu, he comes with a, with a word, and he says, but Simon, you have been so busy comparing yourself to this woman. You've been so busy comparing how good you are. You've been so busy looking at the splinter in her eye. You've been comparing yourself and what you're doing with this woman that you did not notice that in the midst of all of this, this woman who you think is rubbish, this woman who you think has no value, this woman who you think is undignified and making a mess and causing a scene has actually outdone you, Simon. Jesus says this, you had the privilege of my pre presence, Simon. I came to your house. You had the opportunity to host me. You had the opportunity to have me come into your home, but you could not host me the way that you needed to. You did not respect me the way that it is required to do. You did not. Uh, you gave me no water. You gave me no kiss. You gave me no oil. You denied even the most common of courtesies, and yet you were to host my presence in your house. The question is not, why did she do that? The question is, why didn't you? Why didn't you? This is your house, Simon. You built this life. You built this place. You built this, this, this world that you're living in right now. And you invited me into your home, into your life, into your place. And all you can do is look at what this woman is doing and miss that you yourself have a debt. You yourself have missed the mark. You yourself have messed up. Simon. You can learn from this woman. Simon asked the question, why does Jesus seek out sinners? Well, he has the answer. Jesus seeks out sinners not because of their great sin, but because of their great love. Because when we forget our debt, all have sinned. All have sinned and owe a debt that we cannot pay. None of us are able to repay our debts. And this man, this Simon, he forgot that he owed a lot that he could not pay. But this woman, she fell to her knees. You see, in the story, Jesus turns to the woman, but he speaks to Simon. 
because all this time he's been facing Simon and this woman was behind him. She had no water and no basin and yet she loved him. She had no towel and yet she loved him. She had no oil and yet she loved him. She had no water. She had none of these things. Nevertheless, she found a way to worship him. And here you are, Simon, in your house. And you missed this opportunity to host my presence. Pride can be a dangerous thing, my friends. Pride can get us in a lot of trouble. When we start comparing ourselves with others, it's like the story Jesus told about the one man who had a splinter, who saw the splinter in his neighbor's eye, but he had a beam coming out of his own eye. Comparison is not a good way to encounter the gospel. Comparison is not a good way to host the presence of God. Comparison is a dangerous thing in the kingdom of God. See, I'm, I'm really challenged with this message, whether we carry the mood in the house of Simon, or the attitude of the woman who come to worship. I started off this message asking you, is there anything we can learn from a sinner? Or well, maybe there is. Maybe for you and I, we've been saved for a long time, or maybe we have been self-righteous for a long time, or maybe we've regarded ourselves highly for a long time, that we've forgotten to host the presence of Jesus, that we've forgotten how to love like Jesus, we've forgotten how to give like Jesus, we've forgotten to be like Jesus, and we have been judgmental and critical, and, and, and we've questioned so many things when, when the first place is to fixate on Jesus, when our first place is to come to Jesus, when our first place is to worship Him. That's why I love new believers. I love it when, we, when, when I meet people and we had a lovely time on Sunday as we saw so many people get saved here at this, at this campus. And, and, and I just love the fact of seeing a new believer worship because that first love, this is what this woman had. Yes, she got emotional. Yes, she got a little crazy. Yes, she did a few crazy things. But her heart and her eyes was purely fixed on Jesus. Now, I think about the church in Ephesus. We find this in the book of Revelation, the second chapter. And uh, this church did many good things. They did many great things. In fact, they did wonderful things. And maybe today you're doing wonderful things, great things, mighty things. You give money to the poor. You, you do all kinds of things. But this is what it says. You have forsaken this one thing that I have against you, says the Lord. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Have you forgotten the things you did at first? Have you forgotten what your worship looked like when you came to Jesus? Have you forgotten how much you've been forgiven and how much God has done to restore and build up your life? This is the challenge for you and me tonight. Are we going to worship as if somehow we don't owe God anything? Or are we going to worship where we realize we could never repay God for all that He has done for us? He's a good God. He's an amazing God. See, this is your place tonight. This is your moment right now. Will you? Will you fall on your knees again? Will you cry and seek His face? Will you allow yourself to be humbled in His presence? If you won't, if you can't, if you don't see the need to, may I ask you, where is that righteousness coming from? Where are you standing in the Lord's presence today? I believe God wants to see all of us with that first love. I believe God wants to see all of us restored. Maybe your relationship with God has gotten a bit lukewarm. Maybe your walk with God has become a little critical and a little judgmental and a little bit like this Simon in the story. I don't believe Simon was a bad man. I don't believe he was a terrible man. He just lost sight of who God is and how much he has been forgiven in his life. He had lost sight that no man 
No man can save themselves. Only Jesus can. Tonight, would you come to that place with me to humble yourself and to look to Him again? You see, this woman was forgiven of her sin, not because of the actions she, she was doing in that house. Some may say, oh, she, she, uh, because of her love, she was saved. But that's not true. Her love and the response of her love was a, was a, was a consequence, was, was the outflow. It was the fruit of being forgiven. Somewhere, somehow, she had encountered the forgiveness of Jesus. And that's what the scripture is saying. Because she recognized how much she had been forgiven, she could not stop worshiping him. She could not stop loving him. She could not stop giving him her best. She's pouring out the oil on his feet, pouring her tears on his feet, wiping them with her very hair, kissing him. Is that you tonight? Would you like to learn from this sinner woman tonight? Don't be too proud to say, I don't need to do that. Worship is required for every one of us. Father God, I pray that you bless, anoint, enrich, expand, and bring conviction through your Holy Spirit so that we, your people, may learn how to worship you in spirit and in truth. That we, your people, may never forget how great a God you are that you forgave a debt we could never afford to pay. May our worship reflect our position in you. And if you're watching tonight and you need to come to Jesus like this woman, don't worry about what the others say. Come to him with all of your heart and pour out your life to him. Scripture tells us Jesus will never turn. John 6.37, Jesus will ne never send away or turn away anybody who comes to him in this way. God bless you. So good to have you with us. And uh, remember, every week this time, see you online. God bless you.